Assalamu alaikum everybody and a very warm welcome back to the Arabic with Sam podcast. This is episode 22 and I'm Sam, your host, as always. So this episode is titled uh, Food Eating and Stuffing the Face. This is something that we all enjoy to do when we go to the Arab world or Arab restaurants in the countries that we live in. And uh, yeah, so I, I thought there's, there's tons of language stuff that's really, really useful for us, actually. Like there's, there's verbs that we often hear, but I know the first time round when we learn Arabic, sometimes we don't think they're particularly important verbs to know, verbs to do with a specific verb for having breakfast, for having lunch, for having dinner. And um, yeah, so th- this episode would give us an opportunity to kind of delve into some other cultural stuff as well. I, I don't think you can really, you can really have a full lesson without, about food without talking about food culture obviously in the arab world do you know what i mean like it's something so ingrained into um history and 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 people's culture and sort of day-to-day life so we'll definitely have to explore our media world as well a bit today so um so, so yeah today so obviously we're probably going to learn about another 30 words it's going to be a pretty good podcast inshallah i'm quite excited for it um you know we're going to go over maybe 10 verbs i think i've probably got planned um and we're going to talk about kind of cultural and religious significance of of food and stuff as well so it's going to be a um yeah this is going to be quite a deep uh, podcast inshallah so so first and foremost the first thing first thing that's important to mention is that arabic as you know as i mentioned you know arabic has specific verbs for having breakfast for having lunch and for having dinner um and they are actually used um and and some of them have multiple different applications as well so so firstly i mean the, the verb just to eat in general like the broad verb to eat is the verb ekele um, yeah, its root letters are obviously hamza, um, kaf, and lam. E, ke, le. And in the present tense, ye'kulu. Ekele, ye'kulu. Not ye'kelu or ye'kilu. It's ye'kulu. And, um, yeah, and this verb, I mean, it's, it's used a lot in the, in, you know, in the Qur'an and, and carries a number of different significances, I suppose. Like, sometimes the term for eating is used in Arabic. You know, in, in the Qur'an, it's used for, um, you know, الَّذِينَ يَأْكُلُونَ riba. You know, the people who eat riba, the people who eat usury, eat interest. You know, we don't we don't really think about eating it. Do you know what I mean? Like, but but you would use that. You use the, like the, the Quran uses that. And even even though we do kind of draw from it the wisdom of um, of that, you're not allowed to eat. You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't consume interest and then buy your food with it and eat that food. Do you know what I mean? But it's not only about eating. Do you know what I mean? It's not only about that. Um, you know, when that's mentioned and. You know as well that the passive participle, the mafrul, uh, the ism mafrul of it is used in ma'akul. Fajarlahum ka'asfin ma'akul. You know Allah says in Surah Al Fil. Um, you know that, that that kind of gets translated as so he made them like cropped stubble. I've seen it seen it written like that, but I mean cropped. It's not really the same as ma'akul. Ma'akul is like it's eaten. Asfin ma'akul. It's like you know it's eaten. It's eaten stuff. You know what I mean? He made them like eaten something. Um, cool. So um, yes, yeah, so that's the verb ekele where we'll begin. I mean, it makes sense for us to begin with the verb ekele, but but for specific meals, I mean, for breakfast, the verb for breakfast is aftara. Aftara is the verb. It's a form four verb. Um, obviously the noun is iftar. Um, those of you who are Muslims will definitely know, but those of you who aren't Muslims will probably know as well. Probably heard the term iftar because we use that when we break our fast. You know, like in, in English, where we we have the word breakfast, really that is just a um, that is just a um, kind of reduced and um, and sort of normalised way of saying break fast. Like you've broken the fast that you you were fasting when you were asleep right through the night. So that's your break fast, and that that's the same in Arabic. You know, we we have the word iftar for whenever you're breaking your fast, right? You use that in Ramadan when you literally break your fast, or if you fast outside of Ramadan as well. So that, that's the term for it, yeah? And that's the, that's the term for, for breakfast. That there is a verb to, to have lunch, taghadda, uh, taghadda, and the, the noun is quite common, ghada'un. Um, um, and they are actually used, I mean, you know, I, 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 to be honest, I didn't really, when I first heard that verb, I thought people don't use that. When I first heard it, when I when I first heard that there's a specific verb for having lunch, I just thought, nah, people don't use that. Like a, you know, but 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 they actually do. It actually, you know, it is actually quite an important verb to know for, and it's used in especially in fusha a lot anyway. Um, yeah, taghadda, taghadda. Nice. So um, th- there is also a verb to have dinner. Um, the verb tanawala, tanawala. Um, تناوله يتناوله 
um, and tanaa wool would be the noun from it. Although, just the dinner generally is just um, is just a masha, asha, um, very close to the word isha. You know, like salat al isha is the salah that you the last salah that you pray at night. Um, but uh, but yeah, asha is the is is the actual word for dinner. You don't. I've never heard anyone say tanaa wool. Um, although it is actually a word, but the verb tena, well, it definitely is. I know that it's it's even one that um, in the GCSE exams is they always make a note of of using that. Um, usually in the oral exams and stuff. In the, in the past, anyway, I don't know in the new spec if they if they they do it anymore. But the verb tena, well, it always seemed to come up in the GCSE. Nice. So um, okay. So those are obviously some important verbs. The verb ekele, um, the verb aftara. Uh, the verb um, uh, taghadda and the verb tanawala. But um, obviously those aren't the only verbs to do with eating, um, having them at different times. There's also this verb in Arabic, ata'ama, ata'ama, which means to feed, but but not not to like... Well, it means to feed someone else, right? It means to, it means to like feed your pets or whatever, like, or to, like to feed, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't mean... Because like in English, we can use the word feeding. You can say that the, the cows are feeding. It means that like they're eating. Do you know what I mean? And um, but it's not it's not like that. It's like you're feeding someone else. You know when you do Um and the and the present tense will be yutrimu. Ata'a, ata'ama, Um and it's used many times in the Quran as well about feeding the orphans and stuff. Wa yutrimu na ta'ama ala hubbihi miskina wa yatima wa sira. That's in Surah Al-Insan, also called Surah Al-Dahr. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so so the verb ata'ama meaning to feed, to feed someone else. Let's have a good feeding. The next verb is one that um uh, I, I haven't actually heard it used in, in Fusha very much, but we used it all the time in Amiya, and I and I am pretty sure it's a it's Fusha verb. The verb jarraba. Jarraba yujarribu. Um and, and it means to try something. Um, not not to try as in because like in English we use the verb to try for a number of different things really like if, if I'm gonna try to do something you know we say like howella in Arabic for that howella you howilu and it will and blah 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 I will try to do something but when we say jarraba jarraba you jarribu that that verb is is for like um, for literally like tasting something. Do you know what I mean? It means can I try it? It's like I'm gonna try it or something like, and and then in Ami, you obviously use it a lot in the market when people like give you a sample of the dates or whatever. They'll say like Jerib. They'll they'll give you a they'll give they'll say the imperative to you Jerib. You know, and uh, and if you want to try something, you say Mumkin Jerib. Can I like can I try it? Mumkin Jerib. Um. Yeah. So so anyway, like that that is a form two verb Jarraba. Um. Yeah. But um. But I've I've mostly heard it used in Amiya. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's yeah, it's just really common. But um but afterwards I thought I'd make a note as well. Like it, it does mean to it means to try something. But there's another verb, tadawaka, which means to taste something. Um yeah, tadawaka, yeah, tadawaku, tadawuk. Um yeah, it literally means to like yeah, to, to taste something. To just like we use in English, taste something. There is a there is another verb, um, the form one verb, dhaqa yadhuku, but that's that verb isn't really to do with like eating. Um to taste something is um that that verb is, is used for like when like humans when we taste death or when we taste an experience or something, it's, it's not really used for eating. Um hence um kullu nafsin mawt, like every 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 soul shall taste death. That that really famous um, that really famous passage in Surah Al-Ankabut. Kullu nafsin dha'iqa tul mawt. Dha'iqa tul mawt. So dha'iq is the um, the ism fa'il from dha'iqa yadhuqu. But it's it's different to this. That's different to this. You know, this this is actually tasting food. Tadawwaqa. And a tadawwaq. I taste something. Tadawwaqtuha. I, I tasted it. Yeah. Um, nice. Uh, I ne- next did have written on the verb ekele, but I think we've already talked about that sufficiently. Um, yeah. I had shariba written, but shariba means to drink. It's not really not really to do with eating or stuffing the face. Um, yeah, so we don't really need to say anything about that. Maybe I'll follow up this with a, a, a uh, drink, drink, drinking, and um, I don't know, and... Sp- yeah, I don't know what the equivalent of stuffing the face is. If it all goes in the face, doesn't it? So I suppose you would use that with drink as well. But um, anyways, 
The next was to um, uh, to cook something. Tabakha. Tabakha. Um, yotbakhu, I think sounds right. It's where we get the word for a kitchen. Matbakh. Um, and there's a tongue twister as well in Arabic. Um, it means like we, we cooked our dish in your kitchen. And that's like a, yeah, it's a tongue twister in Arabic. Um, I remember it was one of the first... Uh, I used to, when I first started trying to learn Arabic, I was like, I don't know, I was 16. Um, and I was still living in, my, in the little village in Cornwall where I grew up. And I used to do a paper round and I'd download onto my little, I had one of those little iPod shuffles, um, a little blue one. And I used to download arabicpod.net, pod, like little podcasts onto it and walk, listen to them as I was walking around the village doing my paper round. And um, I remember there was one lesson in there about that. About and I obviously didn't understand it at the time. There were like the, the hosts of the podcast were trying to say it really quickly. Um, yeah, but, um, but thinking back at it, like I actually know what they were saying now. But back then, I was just trying to absorb it. Like back then, when I was listening to, it, I was just trying to absorb, you know, how they were pronouncing it and what sort of stuff they were talking about and stuff like that. But yeah, tabakha, tabakha means to to cook something, um, and the matbakh obviously is the kitchen. Uh, next, um, yeah, ne- next was the verb, um, uh, ذبحه, يذبحه. Um, I'm pretty sure it's ذبحه rather than ذبيحه. ذبحه sounds right to me. Um, ذبحه, يذبحه, I think sounds right. Um, ذبحه means to slaughter. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's, um, we don't, I don't know. We don't, we don't, in English, we don't really talk about slaughtering very often. I mean, we're pretty, um, in our sort of societies and stuff, we're pretty sheltered, really, from where our meat actually comes from. Um, yeah, but, but I mean, if you, if, you live out in the, if you live out in the countryside or whatever, in the Arab world, I mean, doing a dhabh, dhabh is, um, I don't know, it's not too far away from daily life. I mean, even growing up in Cornwall, for me, like, we, we knew, like, m- most of my best friends and stuff had animals that they would slaughter and... You know, you know, most of my best friends, you know, growing up in Cornwall, they either lived near farms or on farms or they lived near forests. And lots some of my mates' dads used to go out hunting and hunt deer and stuff. And then we'd eat it the next day at the house growing up in Cornwall. So for us, but it's, I don't know, even talking about the, you city folk don't have the stomachs for it. A lot of the time I get people saying to me, don't talk about the, the on your podcast, please, Sam. But it's just part of our ekel. If it's part of ekel, we need to talk about it in this episode. So um, so let's get into actually talking about some t- types of food, actually. Um, we've talked about some verbs that are very useful um, for talking about eating um, and some of the kind of, I don't know, some of the uses of it in and around the Qur'an. So in terms of foods, I thought it would be important to talk about like foods that are from the Sunnah. You know, for those of you who don't know, when we talk about the Sunnah, we're talking about the example um, of the Prophet Muhammad, um, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May peace and blessings be upon him. Um, because there are, we know quite well the foods that he liked. Um, it's quite significant, really. I mean, like the fact that, you know, a large percentage, I don't want to put a number to it, but definitely over 50% of what we know of our beloved Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know because of his wife, Aisha, radiallahu anha. Um, may Allah be pleased with her. She, like, she, she told us, do you know what I mean? She told the companions about the food that he liked, the way that he would sleep. Um, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Like we have real details about the foods that he liked. And we know that um, we know that our beloved messenger had a sweet tooth. Uh, we know about a lot of the foods that he liked. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about them. I mean, when, when, we, say, when we say that they are a sunnah, um, sometimes that term can be confusing because there are things that are a sunnah as in, as in he did them but they might not be a sunnah as in he encouraged other people to do them. Do you know what I mean? There, there might be something that he did. Um, yeah, and, th- and therefore the term sunnah can, may- can maybe be applied to it because it's something he did. Like, like, for example, having long hair, right? For men having long hair. Like, like I have long hair for, for a man. And people say to me, like, do you do it because it's a sunnah? And I'm like, no, because I don't think it is something he encouraged other people to do. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like the beard. Like, growing the beard is something that, that, that the Prophet ﷺ gave us clear, c- clear, explicit um you know command to do um but growing the hair isn't like growing the hair isn't so like when when you talk about sunnah as in something that the prophet sallallahu encouraged there's this other term which is mustahab mustahab if something is um yeah if something was encouraged as well so like with, with these foods it's not that they are mustahab it's just that they're things that we know that he liked you know and some of them are mentioned in the quran as well some of these other foods and that obviously 
raise their raises his, raises their status um, and how important they are. So the first one, really important one, asal, asal, asal just means honey. Um, yeah, asal. Don't know the plural of it because um, you don't tend to say honeys. Um, whenever you're talking about honey, you just say one honey. Um, yeah, and that's the case with a lot of foods, really. I mean, you know, usually if you're talking like rice, for example, like if you're talking about rice, like we don't really have a, we would only really use a plural in English if we we're talking about lots of different kinds of rices. Do you know what I mean? That, that's the only time we'd really use that. So yeah, asil. First, start off with asil. Um, yeah, asil is even mentioned explicitly in, in many a hadith as well, about it being the food of foods and the drink of drink and the medicine of all medicines. Um yeah, like the, the the brothers down in Cornwall, um, our Muslim brothers and sisters down in Cornwall. We're quite famous in Cornwall for our bees. Our bees uh, produce good honey, apparently. So people, you know, our Muslim community in Cornwall, they they, they like being in Cornwall because we've got decent honey down there. I've even known brothers, like I met a brother um, a little while ago, I went for dinner with a, with a brother in um, in London. And, uh, and he was telling me the only reason why he knows about Cornwall is because of the honey down there, because of the bees and the honey down there. Anyways, next one, Timur. Timur, um, yeah, dates, Timur, really important, um, yeah, Timur, um, obviously there are different kinds of dates, like, I, I know, I know, even in, like, the story of, um, uh, Maryam, um, when she's, like, when she's, when, when, um, Maryam is underneath the palm tree, and she, like, shakes the tree, um, and the, the dates fall down to her, I know it's always translated as dates, but it doesn't use the word Timur here, it uses the term Rotob, Rotob. I don't know what the what the difference is, rotab and timur rotab, or if rotab even are dates, or if it's just translated as dates, just to, just so that we would understand it. it might not. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'll stop talking about it because I don't know. Um, next one, fig teen. Yeah, teen is in the Quran. Um, yeah, there is a, a surah in which Allah begins with teeny wa zaitun. Um, that brings us to the next one, Zaytun, yeah, olive. Yeah, there's a there's a festival, well, not really a festival, it's just an event in, in Nablus where where I studied in Palestine. There's a um uh, there's like a, an event in sort of November maybe called Qata'a Zaytun. Qata'a Zaytun, where like the people from people from the city will go up onto the two hills on each side of the um each side of the city and go and pick all the olives. Um yeah, but the Zaytun is, is very important, especially for like people from that area of the world, like in Sham in general is that's, that's olive country. Uh, next, the word for a pomegranate. Roman. 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 I don't think it has anything to do with the Romans. Because <laughs> um, in, uh, like in Arabic, there's the term Ar-Rum. That refers to the Romans. There's a chapter of the Quran called Surat Ar-Rum. But um, yeah, Roman is just, just means a pomegranate. pomegranate. And um, it's believed to be um, like a food of paradise. You know, we believe that it's a food of paradise. Uh, next, on the topic of um, foods of paradise and... Um, Meats that and things that I mentioned in the Quran is the word laham. Laham is a uh, just means meat, um, and specifically in the Quran, laham laham al-tayr, laham al-tayr, like the meat of birds, is um is one that's um, explicitly mentioned in the Quran. Uh, next, um, adas adas are lentils. Yeah, it must be lentils. Adas lentils, and then basal is um uh, is onion, is a basal. Nice. Um, honestly, we could go on for like weeks talking about different foods and stuff, but I thought we'd mention the ones that are kind of in Quran and Hadith, and you know, we, we don't want to we don't want to make this podcast um, incredibly long, so um, you know, we won't we won't reel off hundreds of them. Um, no, you know, m- most of you are pretty familiar with these, so we'll run over them fairly quickly. I mean, I just wanted to mention um, that that actually um, when whenever we celebrate Eid. When we say Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, both of those things are related to food. You know, when we talk about the term Fitr, that's um, it comes from the same root as Iftar, right? It's the it's the it's the Eid. It's like the so the like the you know the the day the day the celebration or whatever of Fitr on the day of us ending Ramadan. So Eid al-Fitr is what the one that's at the end of Ramadan, and uh, then Eid al-Adha. Adha really means the same thing as. Vabiha. It means the same thing as as vabah, as slaughtering. But udhiya is is all. They almost mean the same thing, um, and that's like the that's like the the Eid of the slaughter. Um, yeah, and it's kind of um, it's, it's sort of in um, 
it's sort of it's symbolic of um, Ibrahim السلام, being willing to sacrifice his son and then not having to and then slaughtering a sheep. Um, yeah, but that's what the Eid al-Adha is. It's like the Eid of the the Eid of the slaughter. The Eid al-Adha. Um, before we move on, before we sort of take a trip to Hamiya land, um, there's also just the words Siyam and Salm that I wanted to mention as well. If we're going to mention food, we'll, we'll mention the, the abstaining from food as well, which is Siyam, fasting, or the term Salm as well. The, those two, they mean the same thing, really. They're, their use is a little bit different, but they mean the same thing. Siyam and Salm. Nice. So let's take a little trip to Hamiya land. Um, because... Um, yeah, obviously, food is talking about food is something that you need a bit of amiya in there for really anyway. Because it, even down to like the, like, like if you go to if you go to Sham, if you go to like Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Palestine, you'll notice right in the amiya, like the words for good, you have this word like hello. If something's good, you say that it's hello. And if it or, or if like if someone asks you how are you, you can use this term mnih. You say mnih to mean good. But that word mnih really means malih. It comes from like the word for salt, milih, right? So like these two words for good in Aramiya really come from like halu, meaning like sweet, and malih, meaning like salty. <laughs> like, you, like you know that you know that a culture, uh, uh, um, I don't know, deeply connected to their food and to taste when their words for good are sweet and salty. Um, but, but they don't say mili, they say imni, they, they change the lam to a noon. And that, that's quite common in Armenia generally. I mean, like, you know, another, another really common example is like the term for the word for impossible. So if something's mustahil um, in Armenia often becomes mustahin. Um, yeah, you hear people say mustahin, but um, yeah, it's mustahil. Um, yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, so Malih or Imnih, and obviously sisters say Imniha, um, and then Hello to, for something to be nice. Um, Iktir Hello. Iktir Hello. You hear people say that. It's, it's very nice. Iktir Hello. Uh, next one is um, obviously in, there's this, there's this dessert called Iknafe, and I, I never know how to explain it to people who haven't seen it, because we just don't really have desserts that have like stringy cheese in them here in the UK. But it's like, it's kind of like a sponge, but like with like a syrup on the top. And then there's like a stringy sweet cheese underneath. It's seriously good. Um, not for your weight, but but it just tastes so good. and. It's iknafe. They say iknafe. I think the actual term in Fusha would be like kanafetun, but um, but you, you say iknafe, iknafe, and especially iknafe neblusi, especially like yeah, na neblusi iknafe. It's the good stuff. And when you order it, uh, you order it in um ukiye. Ask for an ukiye. Um, I don't know what an ukiye is. Um, I think it might be an ounce or something or a, or. A, I really have no idea when you is an ounce a lot of like sugar and butter and fat and cheese to order sounds like a lot um but that's how you order it and you, they usually serve it to you on um actually no no not not always I was going to say they have like brightly colored plates but that's just the place that I used to go to um but yeah it's the good stuff it's the good stuff sometimes I'd go more than once in a day do you know what I mean that's that's some calories for you right there cool Nice. What else have we got? Um, oh yeah, only two more things left. On the topic of Palestine and like that area of the world generally, there's a there's a food called me'lube, me'lube, um, or a maqlubetun. Um, and that comes from the term, um, I mean maqlub literally comes from a verb qalaba, meaning to be like f flipped over. Um, you know, we, we talk about Allah being al-muqallib, the one who can sort of turn the hearts, can flip the hearts. Um, but maqloob means that something's kind of flipped over. So, so what is this food that's been kind of flipped over? Um, it's like a it's like a pan of of like um, chicken or lamb normally, I think, and like vegetables and rice on top, and then you flip it over and it just stays like a dome. It's like a like a dome of, and there's like the meat underneath and the rice on top, and it's it's really good. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's the good stuff. 
Yeah, it's, it's a bit different to mensef. I don't know if you had mensef. I think mensef is actually a Jordanian food originally, actually, as well. I don't know if, the, I don't know if it's that... I don't know if it's that metalubi is with chicken, mensef is with lamb. I don't know if that's the difference. If you're on YouTube, let me know in the comments. Um, if you're a Palestinian or if you know, let me know in the comments where mensef and metalubi are actually originally from. Or there might be a contentious debate over it, actually. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe I opened up a can of worms there. But, but anyway, so we will end um, as we exit um, Aramiya land. Um, the last thing is the violation to the word ekele that is done in Aramiya. So, um, so yeah, so, so obviously in Fusha we have this we have this thing where we don't want to bring two sakuns together, right? Like normally we have a verb like keteb, like ketebe, and we're saying like ena in the present tense in the Moldare. We say ena ektubu, but this e at the beginning of a verb which already has e, we don't like to say ena ekulu. Ekulu. Arabic doesn't like to have et together, and there is a rule for that, but I'm, I'm simplifying it so, so just so everyone can get it. So, so what they do in Arabic is you put an air, you put a mend on the top of it. So you end up with just ekulu, ekulu. And obviously in Aramiya they stick bears in front of it, so they say an abekul, an abekul, intibtekul, uh, intibtekuli. They say like that, and then with ihna. Um, sorry, nahnu, but ihna in Aramiya, um, they even, believe it or not, they don't even pronounce a med anymore. They say, ihna mnokil, mnokil, or at least that's what they do in Palestine anyway. Ihna mnokil, it's not even nakul, it's mnokil, and they put like a little meme before it. Ihna mnokil iknafi, they say it like that. Um, so, so yeah, so... Akala has become imnokul. Nekulu has become imnokul. Generally a note on like Shami dialect, generally, it loves Kasra. Um, you know, Tatmod waters end up being pronounced like Kasra, like on the end of Iknafi, um, Jami'iyye, um, what else? Anything else with a Tatmod water? E. Um, and if you can, if there is a way to put a little castle at the beginning of something as well, then you will. The name Muhammad becomes Imhammad. Imhammad. You end up with a little I at the beginning of it. So, okay, so we're nice. We took a little detour. We took a little detour throughout, through, through Sham. Um, alhamdulillah. So I hope you've enjoyed episode 22 of the Arabic with Sam podcast. May Allah bless you guys and thank you guys for being part of it and for coming to join me this evening, this, this beautiful Monday evening. Um, I have two things that I'd like you to do. Number one, I'm going to start asking you guys to listen on iTunes to start leaving a rating and, um, um, and also leaving a comment as well and subscribe. If you can subscribe over on iTunes as well, then please subscribe. I want to start getting people to do that, inshallah. Um, another thing is... Join the Arabic in 60 Stats program if you haven't already. Um, I'll link it up in the show notes um, so you can go and check it out and stuff. That's kind of my flagship program. That's it's a program that I'm really proud of. And fact is, out there, most people don't have like a, a structured curriculum. And at the end of the day, um, without it, it will cost you a lot of time and money because, well, time is money, isn't it? Like if, 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 it, takes you, if it takes you two years to learn something instead of one that year, even if you're on minimum wage, is like ten thousand pounds, do you know what I mean? So so it's um it's worth investing in something like that. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that this week. I think I think there's a rant coming about people who want to learn for free. Um because I have I've experienced learning a lot of things for free and paying for stuff. And um I've learned quite a lot about that, about sort of what, what an effect it has on you if you are invested in something, if you've paid for it. Um, but that's for another, that's for another day. So, yeah, so if you're on iTunes, uh, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a rating, and, uh, wherever you are in the world, um, speak to me about the Arabic in 60 Steps program if you're interested in having sort of a structured system, um, in a way that has support, has, you know, resources that you can access anytime, workbooks that I'll post to you for free, um, and you get me to look after you the whole way through. So, so that's the good stuff. Was there anything else that I wanted to ask from you guys? Um, I thought I thought that was something. Oh yeah, I was going to ask you guys. Let me know if it's okay with you guys if I start putting um, putting other stuff on the podcast because at the moment we do one a week. But if I were to do more, um, of course that'd be fine with you guys. Of course it would be. Do you know what I mean? What am I, what am I thinking? Of course it'd be fine with you. You get to enjoy it more more times a week. But it just mean we'd have shorter episodes. We might have some episodes that are like 10 minutes, some episodes that are like 5 minutes, some episodes that are like 20, some episodes that are like 15. Um, but that, that'd be fine anyway, because if you don't want to 
like you guys will vote subconsciously, won't you? Because the things that look terrible, you won't you won't listen to them. So that'll work out fine. That is everything for today's episode of the Arabic with Sam podcast. Hope you guys have enjoyed as much of as uh, much as I have, and hope you've enjoyed coming with me on the journey through Ekil land, and then through Aramia land, and then back to Arabic with Sam podcast land. Catch you guys next Monday for episode twenty three of the Arabic with Sam podcast. See you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.